Most years around this time, I make the long pilgrimage to LA, driving from San Francisco with my real-size R2-D2 robot in the back. This is to attend R2LA, the annual West Coast gathering of crackpot Star Wars robot builders. So hi, I'm about to go on my long drive to LA. Uh, and usually when I drive to R2LA, I have R2 at the back, but today it's empty and doubly empty. It's empty of R2 and empty of family because I will need all the space I have for uh, a haul of uh, vintage HP computers uh, that I'm planning to do in LA. So uh, I'll take advantage of the emptiness to add a few stops on the way that uh, my family wouldn't have tolerated. So see you there. I picked the first stop right along the way, just entering LA. This is the location of the privately owned Nezacut collection of antique automobiles which I had never seen. I have to say this free, yes, free museum wildly exceeded my expectations. If you are ever into upper Indian collectible cars from the roaring 20s and beyond, this is the place to visit. But the real goal of my trip was 45 minutes away in Gardena. Except these are 45 LA driving minutes. It took me over two hours, including the Waze shortcuts, to get to my destination. Next time, I will just use Google Earth, which seems to be a far more efficient way of transportation. I was visiting the lair of Ed Blacksmith, one of the last standing vintage HP computer maintenance technicians, who tells me he's closing his warehouse for good. Believe it or not, this old HP stuff is still in use in the industry and in the military, often attached to some nefarious weapon systems developed in the 1970s. Hello, Ed. How are we doing? I'm doing good. I'm arriving camera in hand. <laughs> you're, go you're going to be a celebrity. <laughs> Ed is the Mr. RTTY of vintage HP mini computers. His warehouse used to be a lot bigger and fuller, but it's closing down now. So, well, so you still have quite a bit of stuff. I know. It's, I it's, 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 at least you can go through the aisles. Last time we could well, not go through the, the aisles. The shelves here, some of the uh -huh. stuff over here. I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff on these shelves. The top shelves, I've cleared them off. So it's oh, that's true, that's true, that's true, that's true. That used to be full up full to the up ceiling. There, right? And other stuff, and then I sold a bunch of it off, too. All right. So it's like, it's gone. Okay. And what I have left is mostly uh, miscellaneous debris. Gold boards for the most part. Uh, do you have interface boards? That's probably the, the one. Which thing. one do you want? I have a little list, uh, but uh, I won't, list. Won't, won't be okay. Because <laughs> do, you, do, you have some, do you have some memory ones left over? Well, it depends on which size memory, what kind of machine. Uh, for the so mostly 1000. 1000? Okay, stuff. you want 256Ks then. Of course. Okay. The HP 1000s are the center of my HP collection. I have a whole bunch of them. MX, E, and Fs. Can All we right. take a, a little tour of your collection before we well, let's take start a quick tour here. picking? Not much to see. Need well, to aluminum scrap here. lots of uh, keyboards. You know, these people are. You no, know, you can find the uh, the terminals, but you cannot find the keyboards. These are the keyboards for the HP 2645 terminals, these high end terminals from the 1970s, of which I made a few videos already. I even made a Star Wars font for them. These terminals are rare enough, but the keyboards even more so. So those are, pre well, those are pretty able good. To find the keyboards. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna go away. Really? I'm These terminals are all gonna go away. I, I, might, I might just take them and you don't want to sell them on eBay? Too much trouble? Too much trouble. Okay, I might, I might take a, a few keyboards for people who are looking for them. Oh, okay. So those are boards, those are for the, uh, the 98, 286 and 386 series. I was mixing up my numbers. These modules belong to these bad boys, the 9826 and 9836 series, an HP scientific and test automation desktop computer predating the PC era. Keep the one megs. Okay, oh, well, could yeah. take a few of those too, you never know. Okay. 
this is the kind of gold you find inside of them. Yep. That stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, that's when they, oh, this they is, put a lot of gold in there. They did, and this is like, you know, probably about 75 to to $100 worth of gold on here. That much? Yes. So that what what is that? That's an expansion board. What what is this thing? That's there's nothing on it. Nothing on it. Just gold plated. But you know, nobody uses these anymore. Gold scrap. Gold yeah, scrap. well, people use the gold <laughs> they sure that do. that we ran out. Yeah. More keyboards. Here's uh, what's left of the 5451. Ah. Well, there you have one one piece of it. Here is a complete HP 5451 Fourier analyzer system in good company. I had been buying bits and pieces of it at Ed's shop before I found this complete unit. Also a fascinating machine for a future video. Discs over there. There's a 7900 here. Yeah, I have two of those already, so I'm maxed and out. power supply. I'm maxed out on these. Okay. Yeah, the discs, so... 7900 the original one it came with with this machine so this is an early machine this is the last 7900 but uh -huh. it's gonna so you're going to scrap it yeah, yeah, you what should, am i gonna do with it i can't keep it nobody wants it so it's gone should, should, yeah, I so give everybody the chance take it and the tape it's a b i have two b's already so I love big 9-track tapes. Here are two 7970Bs, the 800CPI version, and here's the 7970E, 1600BPI uh, version in action in my ASCII art demo. Oh, a um, time generator. I need a few of these. Here's the good one. This is the latest one. Okay. All right. Uh, you want a few of them? Yes. Okay. Because these were the, I can, you the can, jumpers on it. You those can, are the best ones. You can put one on, on, on every system. So give me give me three. Three of them, okay. Oh, yeah, this is the HP 2116 B, the the first computer um, for that Hewlett Packard made. And as you can tell from the number of paddles, it's a 16-bit machine. And uh, that's the interface cards for it and the interface card of this you no know, core memory machine from the early 1960s they kept the format all the way through the 1980s uh, and they are made to interface with anything so every time you have a new uh, instrument to hook it up a, a, a paper tape drive for example you add a card and off you go and there's a lot of empty slots just for that so when you are serious about your HP 2100 or 1000 machines, you can never have enough interface cards. Believe it or not, I am still missing a few. And then you have the uh, 90... Yeah. Yeah. Eight, oh, this one has a whole big number in there. Yeah, it's an 8290 whatever the hell. Right, right, right. Yeah. The twin floppy. These are five and a quarter floppy units with HPIB interface. I use mine with my HP 85. Oh, do you have, uh, so these are 9885s over there? Yes, I Okay, that, 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 that I, could, uh, I could vouch for too. Okay. Do you have 9895 by any chance? Oh yeah, 9895. Okay. <laughs> I have that printer. It's going away. HP 2564. There it goes. 600 lines per minute, folks. Okay, well, all right. That's, that looks more like it, what it used to look like, where you couldn't go anywhere. So that's the precious stuff that you, you keep, or? Well... No, I pulled these shelves down. Oh man, the 5420? Or, yeah, some part of it. Part of it, yeah, but I, I tore that apart for the motherboard. And here's the 5420. This is basically a miniature DSP. A signal analyzer, as they call it. You can Fourier transform anything, make convolution. It had uh, uh, 20 or 40 kilohertz, I can't remember, digitizer, two channels. 
Oh, a disk pack. I uh, for I have to to make sure that you remember I bought the disk from you. I, I could. 79, 20, 25, what? So this big baby, I haven't made a video about it because I haven't restored it yet. Uh, I'm not sure if it works. But underneath, which is stuck, we can't open it. That's where those big disk uh, packs come in. Let me grab one. Big guy, there's several platters on it. You take it down, you, you, you take it out of its enclosure, basically. Open this up, screw it down. And that humongous thing would do 120 megabytes, which was an ocean by the time. Okay, let's go pick in. Let's make a pile. Loot so far, some disks for my HP 7925 disk cartridges, some alignment disk cartridges for the 7906 and the 7905, a whole bunch of boards for the HP 1000s, uh, some memory boards, ROMs, I was missing ROMs, uh, harness, I'm missing a harness. Uh, front panel for replacing the buttons, that's for the terminals, um, this is the memory boards. Down there I wasn't planning on getting that, these are um, little thermal printers and one of them is a parallel one so I can hook it up to the 2116 and these are interfaces for uh, the muxer, terminal muxer. And here's Ed! <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah. Let's go eat. <laughs> okay. Here's the loot. I think I'm filled up. I saved a few keyboards. I uh, went for a printer that actually turns to be an OK line printer for the HP 2116 parallel interface. And on the other side. I have all the alignment packs and some more discs back there. And all the cables. The flex discs underneath. Okay. Good to go. It was nice to relax the next day at R2LA and admire others' robots. I kid you not, Ed Perello's R2 sprouts at least 10 new gadgets a year. At the end, we get to pile up all of our droids for a nice family photo. And before I left LA, I made sure to drop by the California Science Center. They have a Mercury, a Gemini, and an Apollo, actually the Apollo 15 capsule. Unfortunately, the exhibition was under construction, so I could not see so well. And the quintessential piece of technology, the space toilet. And finally, the, the space shuttle. It's freaking unbelievably huge up close. Just magnificent. So basically that's the hall and uh, most of this is extra parts 
sometimes very little things that uh, is missing and, and hard to get to reproduce a complete system and that uh, it's an extra 9825 uh, that the viewer uh, gave me while I was there thanks you Bob Wallace and lots and lots of 8 inch disk drives and yeah I, I spotted that on top of the shelf oh there you have some uh, voltmeters up there uh, six or seven digit meter uh, we uh, we used it when we repair the AGC so we need more HP goodness really good. so this can do four wire measurement five point two eight well, it's going down and 4.5 so it's is the two is the two guys shorting so if you wonder what goes into these units back there this is the good old the original floppy drive that flops a lot the IBM 8 inch format, which they uh, at first used for ROM, actually, it was addressed to readable only by the customer. And then you know, the GAT, the uh, 5.5, and, and then the 3.5. And, and the printer back there is a line printer. Uh, I already have uh, 2631, but this is 3631 G with an HPIB interface. This one is a 2631. A, the original one that has a parallel line interface so I can connect it with very old equipment. So this is test equipment. This is a disk drive tester and that's for the 7906 uh, that has these kinds of platters and those are alignment platters and also for the washing machine size 17925 has this multiple platters so this is another one of them but for the earlier disc the 7900s so 7900 is the original 2.5 meg i think and lo and behold this one also has the cable this is the original 1960s one, it's written 2116. So the, the first number is the, the machine for which the card was first made. So this is for the original HP computer 2116. And this must be a 40 bit. Oh, it's a tape read. That's for the paper tape reader. We haven't talked about that one. And here's the paper tape drive. So this is a. Uh, pretty pre-derb optical so it's very very fast so once we'll have punch our tape on the ASR 33 which will take a while then to read it we won't use the ASR 33 we'll use the high-speed paper tape reader with the interface card that I've just bought that's the Output 40 bits. Why 40 bits? Because this is uh, also for the 2116. This is to interface equipment before HPIB existed or binary interface existed and they outputted uh, BCD decimals. So this is 10 digits of BCD decimals. So the, the BCD cars would connect to something like this. Uh, so this is the older style, 1960s style uh, HP equipment and these are the first digital implements and they are barely digital, it comes out with a lot of lines on the other side uh, or just a copy of the digits, those are Nixie tubes in BCD on the back. Well, they have all the little pieces that are missing so that should really improve my chances in getting most of the stuff I have working.